Kuito. President, please be seated. The court is now in session. Today, the chamber will continue hearing the testimony of Kang Yeo alias Dui. Greffier, Ms. Jie Si Huang, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings. Greffier, Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present except Mary Giro, the international college lawyer for civil parties, is absent without reasons. Mr. Nguyen is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in, in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the greffier. The witness who is to testify today, Kang Yeo Anloy, is already available in this courtroom. President, thank you, Ms. Chia Si Huang. The Chamber now decides on the request by Nguyen Jie. The Chamber has received a waiver from Nguyen Jie dated 21st of June 2016, which states that due to his health, headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his rights to participate in and be present at the 21st of June 2016 hearing. Having seen the medical report of Nguyen Chia by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 21st of June 2016, who notes that Nguyen Chia has chronic back pain when he sits for long and recommends that the chamber grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 81.5 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants Nguyen Jie's request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs via audiovisual means. AV unit personnel are instructed to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nguyen Chie can follow the proceedings. This applies to the whole day. Next, the chamber gives the floor to the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chie to put questions to the witness. You may proceed. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, and good morning. Uh, your honors, good morning, counsel. Good morning, Mr. Witness. Um, yesterday, uh, when we broke, uh, we were speaking about um, surveillance and monitoring uh, people who were suspected. Uh, we also spoke about um, uh, people who were implicated by confessions um, let me follow up on that by asking you um, a question as to what you meant uh, when you gave evidence a few uh, days ago, the 13th of June uh, 2016 at 11.10. You said, uh, and I quote you, in terms of implementation, I was repeatedly instructed and warned not to make any arbitrary arrest of anyone. Um, what exactly did you mean when you said that? Witness. Thank you. Mr. President, this is not my word. That is the lines, party lines, and also the print political line of the party. The arrests which were not endorsed by the party were illegal, and the, the, the one who made the arrest would be responsible. 
I made mention about Sukkuchamran from sector 25. He killed a party member. After 17 April, Sukkuchamran was arrested and smashed. Another real example, it was the case of Nat. He made the arrest of people at Dakmao concerning the the vehicle uh, reversing and the individual here was arrested. Nat and I were working together in 1966. We were in the branch of the party and I know at the time, I knew at the time that Nat made the arrest illegally. I talked to him that the arrest, any arrest, were not endorsed by the party would be considered illegal and we would be considered traitors. As a result, we would be in danger. When not as brother Sun Sen, our superior, called us to work with him, Nat at the time uh, presented to be um, pretend to be proud and at the time Brother Sun Sen took off his glasses and uh, made mention about illegal arrest. So uh, what I have told you is concerning the part party line is not my word. I was a party member. I had to adhere to the party lines and I did not make any arbitrary arrest and my subordinates would, be, would not be allowed to make arbitrary arrest as well. Um, yesterday um, we spoke about the arrest of um, Yin Sambat uh, the one who threw the grenades uh, behind the royal palace and uh, the arrest of Chan Chakrai. Um, what you just said, does that mean that uh, Yin Sambat and Chan Chakrai uh, were not arbitrarily arrested? President, please hold on, Mr. Witness. You may proceed, International Deputy Co-Prosecutor. Uh, I think in the interest of clarity, counsel should be clear in his question. Ar arbitrary arrest has one legal meaning. Uh, as we've just heard from the witness, it has a very different meaning for this witness, which is that the arrest had to be approved by the party. So I think counsel should be clear. Um, is he asking him, were these arrests approved by the party? Um, well, the, the witness is not a lawyer, um, Mr. President, so I'm using that exact same word. Um, I think this is the way I should be asking the question. Um, so, um, following literally his words, um, were the arrests of Chakrai and Yin Sambat arbitrarily? So, I'm just using his own words. I know there's a legal meaning to it, but still, I think I should be able to ask that question. Why is it so difficult to rephrase if there is no second thought behind it to clarify it? Fine. Um, Mr. Witness, was there a good reason for the arrests of Yun Sambat and Chakrai? Mr. President, since I 
have come to testify this court. I have repeatedly made mention of the matter raised by counsel. Sandeba did not have the authority to decide on the arrest from the time when I was M13 up to the time I was chief of S21. I was first uh, chief of M13 and later I became the deputy and head of S21. I myself uh, never issued any decisions to make any arrest. The arrest of party member was to be decided by the center, warned and trusted me to the task to be chief of uh, M13, and he warned me about the arrest, uh, not to be made uh, without the decision of the center. M13 was required to receive the arrested people only. However, sometimes they ordered M13 to uh, gather the forces to make the arrests. So in summary, the arrests of Yem Sambat and Chan Jak Rai were decided by the upper echelon and then the two individuals would be se were sent to S21 after the decision uh, for the arrest and after the individuals were arrested, they were sent to S21. So again, decision of the arrest were made by them and they were sent by the superior above as well. I do not understand about the international law. However, according uh, to the party line, no arbitrary arrests uh, could be made. So Santiba went to make the arrest based on the endorsement of the upper action. So in accordance with the lines or party lines of party lines, the arrests would only be made after the decision or endorsement of the upper action. In my life I never issued any decisions uh, for the arrest without the endorsement from the upper action. Please listen to my question, um, Mr. Witness, and don't repeat yourself a um, hundred times. Uh, do you know whether the party center had a good reason uh, to arrest Yin Sambat and Chakrai? Was there a, a reason, suspicion of treason, for instance, for their arrest? Uh, or involvement of sabotage or involvement of planning of a coup d'etat, was there an actual good reason uh, for Yin Sambat or Chakrai to be arrested? Thank you, Council. It beyond my knowledge to respond to your question. A few days ago, I made a mention about Aubrey Abaja, a French person. He said the political regime ended, the government also ended, but the police will be in operation. So the investigation is dependent on the police. However, the decisions are made by the government. One time I met uh, Victor Lebret. Do you know that guy? Victor Lebret was the high commissioner of human rights. is a high commissioner of human rights. Uh, the individual went to see me in the detention cell. And he says, he said, police officers, police officers have to be, has to adhere to the decision of the government. So governments made, makes makes the decision and 
the police will have to adhere to the decision by the government. So the question put by you cannot be answered by me since it's beyond my understanding and I cannot answer it. Only the people in the center could do so. But, but Mr. Witness, you uh, were involved in the interrogation of Yin Sambad. You were involved in the interrogation of Chan Chakrai. Yesterday we discussed uh, that he, that Chan Chakrai was monitored for a long time. Um, at least you should be able to answer the question, what had Chan Chakrai done um, that led to his arrest? Thank you, said the witness. President, please hold on, Mr. Winner. You may proceed, co-prosecutor. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. President, the he, counsel's asked the same question three times now. Um, he seems to be encouraging the witness to speculate. I think the, the question should be very clear that he's asking uh, for the witness's knowledge uh, if he was informed uh, and fr other than from confessions for the reason for Chakri's arrest and is not being asked to speculate. I think it's a perfectly appropriate question. Uh, I just try to um, use very simple terms. That's what this witness seems to uh, understand. Um, I know I've asked the same question in other words before, but um, asking him in simple words, does he remember what it was that Chan Chakrai had done that led to his arrest, I think is a completely appropriate question. Well, look, uh, President, the witness is allowed to answer the question in and uh, you are instructed uh, to respond uh, to the limit of your knowledge in relation to the arrest. Witness, thank you, Mr. President. I made a clarification already about the reports of S21. The reports from S21 served as an element for the basis of the upper echelon decisions. The decisions by the upper echelon were based on uh, their own reasons. S21 arrested anyone with, based on the reports of S21 without, uh, and without the authority permission from the upper echelon would be endangered. So arrest made by S21 were to be endorsed by the party or the, the center. And the government, as I said, makes the decision and the decision would be uh, adhered by the police officers. Um, it seems you're not capable, uh, Mr. Witness, of answering that question. Let me move to Koi Tun. Um, what was the reason for Koi Tun's arrest? I have a limited knowledge of uh, Goitun's case. When I lived with Goitun at Bung Thom on the, after 29 October, I observed that Goitun, Goitun was a gentleman and later on it was uh, Goitun was notorious for having affairs with the women. 
that was the rumor at the first stage, and I was not learned about it initially. Goi Thun had the affairs with a woman in Phnom Penh, and after that affairs was learned by the spouse. Goi Thun um, ordered the arrest of Long, and uh, when Long was being arrested, Koi Thun was there as well uh, to help the arrest and put him in a bag. So in the case of Koi Thun, I have known him much, uh, but I do not have the full knowledge uh, concerning Koi Thun's case. So I have known only 1% of Koi Thun's case, and as for the reasons of the arrest, of Koi Thun's arrest, I do not know. So the affairs of uh, the country at the time uh, was in the hands of in the hand of age 70, and I knew only uh, a minimal part of the affairs, President. Duk, now to deal with the issue, if you do not know the answer, please say so. So answers what you, c you can answer what you can, and if you do not know, please say so, and you cannot uh, um, the response to the question on behalf of the Angale or upper echelon. Um, so you don't know anything about the reason of the arrest. Do you know anything about um, the way uh, Koi Tun was arrested, um, where he was arrested, how long it took uh, to arrest him, uh, by whom he was arrested? Do you know anything about that? Mr. President, Koi Thun arrests. In fact, Koi Thun uh, uh, brought, Pang brought Koi Thun in. And I only received a Koi Thun. So Pang brought Koi Thun in under the instruction of the center and the Koi Thun was brought into S21, uh, was under the instruction of uh, the center as well. Father Son Sen was the former chief of 870. He said, Koi Thun was, my, was once my superior, so I had to be careful. So the instructions from the center were clear. And S21 was at the time waiting to receive Koi Tun. Did you know how Koi Tun ended in uh, the power of Pang? Did you know what happened before Pang transferred Koi Tun to you? Koi Thun was removed from party membership in April. I cannot recall the, day, the date. And he was detained at the center. So after he was removed, Koi Thun had no authority over Pang. And Pang instead had the authority over Koi Thun after he was removed from the membership and was detained in at the center. So after the person was removed from being member of the center, the position was also removed from being the Minister of Commerce. So after, before, Koi Thun was 
detained under was under house arrest. He had authority over his subordinates, and as for Bong, the uh, office A70 had authority over him. After Goi Chun's arrest, I had authority over Goi Chun, and uh, I had to convince Goi Chun to write the confessions for Anka. Um, Mr. Witness, have you ever heard of a, of a, of a combatant of um, uh, the 704th Special Forces Battalion, Meng Hak? Mr. President, it's a bit strange for me after hearing the question. I cannot recall uh, the 704. Well, let me read to you something, um, uh, Mr. Witness. Maybe you heard of it, but I doubt it. Um, Mr. President, I will be referring to E3-2117. English page ERN 00081344, Khmer 001 uh, There's no French translation. Um, this is what it says. Um, Meng Hak, a veteran of the 704th Special Forces Battalion, was assigned to arrest Khoi Tun. Secretary of the North Zone, who was residing uh, north of Wat Phnom. It took two days and a night before it was possible to arrest Khoi because of the many soldiers guarding him." End of quote. Is that something that you heard at the time, that it was very difficult um, to arrest Khoi too? Thank you, Council. Mr. President, I do not really understand after hearing the quote, and I do not also, I do not know Mayha either. And as for the difficulty in arresting Koi Chuan because uh, he had uh, many uh, soldiers, that is not true. It was not difficult at all to arrest Koi Chuan. This is what I can uh, clarify. Um, uh, let me move on to the next um, point in regards uh, Koi Chuan. Uh, yesterday and other days uh, we discussed um, the fact that S21 or the Regiment 21 was a military regiment. Um, subordinate to the general staff, and uh, I quoted you as saying that you were a military person. Now, um, in one of your um, statements, E3-65, um, English ERN 00147519, Khmer 00146480, um, you talked about receiving orders not to torture uh, Khoi Tun, but you added the word, uh, you didn't say you received orders, you, re you said you received absolute orders not to torture. Um, is there a difference between receiving orders um, from your military superior uh, and absolute orders?
S21 had to adhere to the principles set by the party. Torture shall be conducted in case of necessary. That was taught by me uh, in relation to interrogation methods. And Pupa Lee recorded the content of um, the study session. And the instruction from the above to me was to require me to interrogate Koi Chun by myself. And as for the methods of interrogation, of Koi Chun's interrogation, I made mention several times. And the instructions in relation to Koi Chun after he was arrested were that I had to be careful since I was one his subordinate and I was warned not to be convinced uh, psychologically by Koi Chun and I had to be uh, strong in my stance. But I'm asking you as a um, military person or as a um, person part of the military hierarchy, is there a difference between receiving an order and receiving an absolute order? Clear words, because I'm not sure he really gets the gist of your question. Pair the two Khmer terms. Uh, well, I, I, I know what I wrote down from the English uh, transcript, um, but I, I'm, I'm happy not, to ask. I'm not saying you are doing something wrong. I su just suggest if you confront him with the two Khmer terms he used, it might be easier to ask yeah. him if there is a difference. Um, one second, please. The National Council for the Kyusapantin said that there was an, an accurate translation in Khmer between orders and absolute orders. So apparently uh, in Khmer it came across. Um, but let me, uh, in any case, double check uh, the original Khmer transcript. Um, would co counsel for uh, Kiesan Frontimi so kind to read those two words, please? Uh, uh, Mr. President, let me uh, read. I, I will uh, read from the text. Um, quote the related phrase. Uh, during the interrogation of Koi Tun, I was ordered um, not absolutely not to uh, use torture and that I should uh, interrogate him uh, by myself, end of quote. So again, Mr. Witness, this, you seem to add an extra word to being ordered. Um, you were absolutely ordered. And my question is, does that mean something even stronger? Witness. Thank you, Council. I 
I hope that the word uh, which has been read, it was quoted from my uh, statement to the co-investigating judge. Thank you, uh, Mr. Counsel, and I saw you nodding. So uh, the words indicating my view uh, during the investigation stage in which I respond to the co-investigating judge. Talking about uh, the interrogation of Goi Tun, it was monitored every day by Sun Sin and he kept following uh, the confession. It was an absolute order no one there to touch. So Koitun was taken there and put, um, and uh, allow him to sit on uh, a bed. And uh, when he was very angry and he broke uh, the, the eyeglasses and threw away the pen and, and I assigned two God from the special unit to uh, to God, and I order them not to uh, inflict any torture and prevent him from committing suicide. So uh, it was an absolute order not to commit uh, torture or not to uh, cause any problem against him. So it was not intended to inflict any torture until it is the last result. So in his case, Koi Tun uh, fall in this uh, category. In order to understand exactly um, how the interrogation of Koi Tun went, let me take a sidestep um, and try to see if I can somehow compare it. Um, in uh, your own trial, you were accused of um, using violence during the interrogation of a person called uh, Chit Il. And um, you acknowledged that you intervened in the interrogation of Chit Il. Um, in your testimony on the 16th of June 2009, E3-5800, uh, you said, and I quote, uh, so I only slapped into the face of Chit Iv because I knew that he gave in to me, into my interrogation already, that I could not beat him much. And as you recall in uh, your case, the trial chamber um, acquitted you of um, torture charges in relation to Chit Iv because um, the trial chamber ruled that the, the slapping did not cause enough pain or suffering of the severity required for a finding of uh, torture or other inhumane acts. Now, comparing the interrogation of Koi Tun and Chit Iv, um, is it correct to say that a certain amount of violence was used in, uh, in, re in respect of Chit Iv, but none whatsoever in respect of Koi Tun? Witness. Thank you, Council. Mr. President. It was my testimony uh, during my case, in particular to the co-investigating judge. Um, I was the deputy chief of S21 when I was slapping uh, Chit Il and uh, Ma Meng King Elias Mon was uh, the one who interrogated Chit Il. 
and and Chit Il was very angry and um, uh, during the interrogation, and Nat was about to uh, beat uh, the victim, and I was there and I slapped uh, Chit Il uh, during that session because I have better experience and I collect more documents uh, related to Chit Il, so I did that. Uh, it is the truth. When it comes to Koi Tun, In uh, the uh, court proceeding, in one in one section of my testimony, uh, there was an effort to connect me to the torture against Koitun, but it was an absolute order not to torture Koitun. So uh, you cannot compare Chit Il case to Koitun. So in Chit Il's case, I uh, used uh, certain words and then I slapped him. But for Koi Tuan, I used um, a kind of psychological uh, pressure on him for uh, interrogation. Um, I will come back um, uh, to the general use of um, certain interrogation methods later. Let me finish um, my questions about Koi Tun. Um, in your um, WRI E3 slash 1570, English ERN 0154194, um, Khmer 0154224, uh, you said uh, that Son Sen sent Koi Tun to be executed. Um, my question to you is, um, what were the reasons Koi Tun were executed? What had he done? Had he committed treason? Uh, had he planned a coup d'etat? Um, had he staged a rebellion? Uh, what was the reason that Koi Tun was ultimately executed? Witness, uh, thank you, Council. It was decided by Office 820 uh, to arrest him, and uh, the interrogation of Koi Tun was uh, done uh, in person to uh, 870 order. Son Sen, who was uh, following uh, the case very uh, strictly. And Koi Tun was kept for a while, and later it was decided by um, Office 870 to, to smash, to kill him. Regarding the reason for his execution, so um, the policy of the T, uh, CPK during the 70s, so any enemy of the party shall be smashed. So anyone who was arrested and sent to the security center was an enemy. So so S21, um, the, the, there are 12,000 plus victims um, who were smashed. Uh, they were decided by the party and considered enemies, so they were all smashed, uh, except one victim who uh, was spared uh, to uh, spare for, for life. Um. Mr. Witness, I'm not so interested in uh, you repeating the general principles. I'm asking you about one case only. 
Um, you already said that you have no idea why he was arrested, um, but at least you should be able to tell us um, what the actual reason was that at one point in time he was executed. Witness, thank you, Council, uh, Mr. President. I repeated uh, many times. So anyone who was arrested must be uh, smashed. So um, I don't know the reason behind uh, the execution. So the reason. Uh, or during the DK regime uh, was uh, simply any one who considered as enemy was to to be smashed uh, before execution uh, the person would be sent to the security office for interrogation and then smashed president thank you uh, the response appeared to be sufficient for this purpose um, yes, I will move on, um, uh, Mr. President, to my next subject, but I will return to Koitun and Un and others uh, later. Um, Mr. Witness, you've uh, answered many questions already uh, in relation to interrogation methods that were used by you and Hor. Um, when you were questioned by the prosecution, I didn't object to that, um, but um, I will uh, confront you with the use of the word, the use of the Khmer word uh, for torture. Now, it's my understanding that um, in all contemporaneous documents and also in all your testimony, uh, you use the Khmer word Te uh, Aruna Kam. Is that correct? Witness, thank you, Council. The command word Tirunakam uh, uh, was used since I was in M13 uh, through to uh, the 6th of January 1979. We discussed this word Tirunakam um, in a hearing. Um, a few months ago, 27th of April, 2016. And at one point in time, um, the president um, intervened in a discussion, of, uh, or the legal discussion of that word. And I would like to read to you what uh, the president said about uh, this word. And then uh, I would like to ask your reaction uh, to that word. Um, so, Mr. President, I'm quoting you. Um, at 14.05, um, the 27th of April, 2016. Um, President, councils, you should limit yourself um, to other terms, probably like uh, inhuman and degrading treatment, because the word Deyaruna Kam in Khmer um, or generic torture definition is really common in the Khmer context. For example, when a father disciplines a child, we also use the same word te aruna kam, and that would not and that could not be legally defined as torture. So the word has been invited within the behavior and tradition and culture of Cambodia. End of quote. Can you react? Uh, Mr. Witness, to the words of the presiding judge. Witness. Thank you, counsel. 
Mr. President, I uh, do not recall uh, your uh, statement. So when I listen to the quotes, um, it uh, reflect the practice in uh, Khmer family practice. It is part of the um, culture uh, in Cambodia, uh, Cambodian family. So, um, trying to be a bit more legal, um, in the hope you will understand, uh, Mr. Witness. Uh, does the word te arunakam mean both um, certain forms of violence being uh, inhuman or degrading treatment, and ultimately also uh, what we call torture? Sorry, counsel. I mean, as you yourself said, he's not a lawyer. Inhuman and degrading treatment, I know the president introduced it, but it's a legal term too, as we all know. Torture is a legal term. Um, and you are asking him to clarify if a certain Khmer word is identical to any of those two. I, I think this is beyond to what, what a witness can do. President, uh, my intention uh, in that occasion because the parties object to uh, witnesses uh, when uh, discussing on torture during the examination. So I was trying to avoid any controversial during the uh, proceeding or examination because um, it was often objected during the questioning. So uh, I was thinking of uh, two uh, things, because um, I, I think it was not um, legally defined when it used in the ordinary Cambodian family, but later I uh, used another term. I um, advise the lead co-lawyers um, for using the correct term. Um, I advise that uh, she would use uh, um, uh, mistreat rather than torture. But mistreat is uh, less legally uh, in meaning than torture. It was my advice for uh, the lead co-lawyer and uh, based on the testimony of the witness, based on his knowledge uh, during his experience in uh, doing his work. So in this proceeding, uh, you should use um, the proper term to avoid any uh, controversial and uh, any objection uh, if it it led to, uh, to be objectionable. So um, we expect to hear from uh, the witness um, the term that, w that is used at S21. So um, you should not um, uh, confront the, the witness with the legal terminology. So um, uh, you should uh, rephrase uh, your question uh, in this uh, context. I think I've said it at an earlier stage. Perhaps it's easier to be more descriptive, asking him if he uses the word, what exactly, what kind of actions does that involve, as opposed to trying to compare it to legal terms. Yes, l l let me try to do it very factual. Um, uh, Mr. Witness, when I read to you um, that excerpt from um, uh, the president's intervention, uh, you agreed. Um, could you um, tell me what kinds of behavior Te Arunakam um, 
could occur in a ordinary Khmer family in your time? Witness. Thank you, Council, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours, and uh, fellow Cambodians. Um, my mother used to hit me when I commit any mistake, and my father also blamed me, and so uh, his first expression as a, a threat. I, I call uh, those practice as tyrannicum, as torture, because it was a discipline against uh, any uh, violation of the family uh, discipline. Uh, during the CPK regime, I used the term uh, to uh, implement the disciplinary uh, rule. So when one of the enemy uh, fled uh, from the security office, I um, implore Sun Sen uh, to punish me because I made uh, a wrongdoing. Um, I told him that uh, he can remove me from the party membership. So... Um, in practice at M13 or at S21, it referred to the inflicting uh, of um, acts against the physical, uh, the body of the victim to inflict pain. So, so uh, I instructed my subordinate that we uh, should uh, Push the enemy to the corner, and then we, uh, and then we can torture. In ordinary Cambodian family, um, when a mother hit a child, or the father hit uh, the children, it's just a kind of uh, sim, a small beating with a small whip uh, from the coconut leaf. So it's a kind of um, uh, reprimand. So if it is uh, beyond that, it's a, a severe beating, it will be called uh, severe uh, torture. So uh, in ordinary term, Tironukam, it can be like uh, a mother hit a child or a teacher hit a pupil or uh, the monk teacher who who taught a student and uh, hit. So I was hit. I was hit by uh, my uh, professor. So it was referred to as well as uh, teronakam as torture. But in the intention to uh, improve or to uh, correct a person. So that's all I can tell. <laughs> All these semantic excursions are very interesting, but we are a court and interested in facts. So may I suggest, if it is unclear, if language is unclear, specific, and we are only interested in what happened at S21, not so much what happens in Cambodian families at the moment. Council, why don't you, if it's unclear, what f actions have actually been taken when the word torture was used, ask. Then we get the facts which we will then evaluate. Um, let me uh, move on, um, Mr. Witness, uh, and follow up um, what the prosecution has asked you in relation to um, interrogation methods. And um, as opposed to the prosecution, I will not use the English word uh, in my questions, but I will use uh, the original Khmer word, uh, just to be very clear. Let me first um, refer you to what you said um, to the investigating judges E3 slash 454, English ERN 00147603, Khmer 
French 0014-9924. You literally literally said the instructions were not to rely heavily on De Arunakam and be patient. Um, Almost the exact same thing you said um, during this trial, the 9th of April 2012, at uh, 9.18 in the morning. You said the interrogation and um, De Arunakam were the last resort. What we actually wanted was their confession. De Arunakam was the last measure. Is that, was that the case, Mr. Witness? Um, not to rely too heavily on Te Arunakam and that it was the last resort? Mr. President, That was my opinion. Opinion after I experienced, I had experienced at, at, at M13. Pupa Lee was recorded accordingly that uh, torture would be the last resort. And when I certified in 2012, I also made a mention about. Uh, the fact that torture should be the last resort. Is it also correct that, as you said, um, with the exception of Khoitun and uh, maybe in Sambat, you yourself never participated in any interrogation uh, nor observed with your own eyes any interrogation, correct? Thank you, Mr. President. I implore you, Council, not to connect Yom Sombat and Koi Tuan cases together. They were and they they were they underwent uh, different experiences. Koi Tuan was uh, personally interrogated by me. I had to prepare myself uh, before the interrogation, and I need not to speak about this again. I would like to tell the fellow Cambodians that I myself interrogated Koi Chuan, and tortures was not used. And no one uh, used the term uh, contemptible or ah uh, to refer to Koi Chuan until the day that party decided to take Koi Chuan out for smashing. For Yom Zambat, I asked another interrogator to interrogate. I asked her to interrogate, and uh, the uh, record, the confession was, uh, the uh, recording was made at the time that uh, Yom Zambat uh, threw uh, the uh, grenade against the wall of the palace and there were stains, there was uh, this small destruction at uh, that location. I told the court already about the, the case. Later on, the torture was not, was uh, inevitable against uh, Yom Mr. Witness, Forget Khoitun, forget Yin Sambat. Is it correct that you n- never participated yourself in any interrogation and you never witnessed with your own eyes uh, what happened during interrogation? Is that correct?
Let me make a clarification. Since the time I was chief of S21, I had never tortured or interrogated anyone, not at all. Now let me follow up on this um, by reading something you said um, in E3 slash 5771. Um, English year in 0185500 till 01, Khmer 0185492, French 0185509. Um, as for the use of Te uh, Kam, the situation was the following. For simple combatants, Hor controlled everything and could order Triarunakam. For important prisoners, such as Ya, Son Sen gave me his orders on the use of Triarunakam. Is that correct? Uh, do you remember saying this? Mr. President, I have said this from time to time. I recalled well about the interrogation of Ya Koi Chuan and Tum. Brother Sun Sen intervened in the interrogations of those individuals uh, by phone. And my final question before the break, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Witness, would it be fair to say that uh, only in the specific situations when interrogators reported um, on what kinds of methods um, were used that you would know what had happened during the interrogation? That is true. I was so busy with enemies' uh, documents. I called them uh, enemies' documents because uh, they were confessions. Practically, I, um, I do not know what uh, was happening. The party lines uh, was clear on interrogation and torture. I did uh, had uh, the experience and follow the party lines. President, it is now time for break. The chamber will take a short break from now until 10.30. Cut off the Court officer, please uh, assist the witness in the break time in the waiting room and please invite him back into the courtroom at 10.30. The court is now in recess.